I have traveled to many cities across the world. Um, I've enjoyed being in some of them, uh, others not. But I don't know if you've heard that African saying that uh, you can take the villager out of the village, but you cannot take the village out of him. Have you heard that story, that saying? So I grew up in a village. The better part of my early part of my life was in a village in Western Kenya. I think the highlight for me would be sitting uh, at the feet of elders and enjoying this sumptuous meal that had been prepared ostensibly for them, but as children, we had to sit down and partake of this. But the elders themselves, actually, the men, sat there imbibing their ceremonial drink in my village. This was called Oseke, right? Now, Oseke is, uh, is a brew. And actually, brewers of today would be very proud uh, to have encountered this drink because it was a mix of cereals which were ground, uh, they were fermented uh, with yeast. Um, the whole process of brewing uh, would probably put to shame some of the brewers of, of this day. It would spend a, a period in this pot that was being brewed in, and the brewer would be testing it regularly to make sure that it was suitable for the palate for when the day come, came. And drinking this was ceremonial. So the men, there was this, sat on three-legged st uh, stools. Everybody had come from their home with the, his own oseke. Uh, if you didn't have your own, some fun would be made of you as uh, somebody who had not come of age even to own this straw. This oseke was this long straw. And uh, so the men sat down. The pot with the brew was brought in the center. The elder, the eldest person, took the first sip. So he tested it and then took the first sip. Women came with their mats and sat down at the feet of the men. Right. As the men passed around this drinking straw, so you drank, you took your couple of sips, maybe two minutes or three minutes, and conversation was going on. So as conversation was going on, you passed uh, the Oseke to the next person. So the brew draws its name from this uh, Oseke, which is the, the straw. If you are magnanimous enough, you would give it to the woman sitting uh, at your feet. Usually, the woman sitting at your feet would be either the wife of your brother or your cousin. Right? And you'd be making jokes as well uh, as, as, as you passed around this, this drink. Right? If the woman had been unnecessarily uh, cruel to you in one way or another, you'd bypass her with this straw and pass it on to somebody else. And so was life, and so was culture, and so was society. I first came to Nairobi when I joined the Nairobi University. And the village did not leave me. I actually discovered that in those days, even in the city, there were still some tribal associations and clan associations and uh, some groupings. And these groupings continued some of that. When I started working, I decided that this was an element that was not going to be let to die. So many Saturdays, or some Saturdays during the year, I would actually go up country to the village 
and bring this Oseke with me and host uh, my village mates uh, in my house in uh, Akiba Estate in Langata, where we lived then. And this would be great Saturdays uh, with this brew. We would mimic the elders in the village and tell our women to sit down at our feet, <laughs> you know, and serve them and follow the tradition. If they had annoyed you the previous day, you bypassed them and gave the Oseke to a gentleman on the other side. It's interesting, as I remember, uh, even the process of transporting this Oseke from the village to Nairobi. Traffic police on the highway would be looking at this long straw at uh, the back of the car and, and, and wondering what was happening. Um, we would leave them in stitches. Uh, as we gave some cock and bull story about what this thing was and what we were going to use it for. So I remember on the 6th of March um, 2020, transiting Nairobi from Johannesburg uh, to Kigali to run a program I was running there and looking forward to a weekend uh, of relaxation uh, and rest. And the following week, as Agatha mentioned, life shut down. We thought this was just going to be a short time. But as time went by, uh, we realized that actually it could take long. We actually wondered whether we shall survive and come out of it uh, at all, and if so, when. And the extensions of the lockdown kept happening. So, locked in our houses, wondering what to do next, The first few days were probably okay, right? But the first week came and passed, the second week, the third week, the fourth week. What do we do? The good part of life had passed with the village. We are now entering a phase of the bad and the ugly. But even then, some elements of good could come out. I started thinking about, I didn't think about hobbies actually, but as I went out of my house into, into the garden, I started noticing things I'd never noticed before. I started noticing the grass, I started noticing the flowers. I started studying these flowers, seeing them from when the bud is being formed, as they open up, you know, as they blossom, as they die and the circle repeats itself. I was very keen about this. I started noticing the birds that would land on the grass, you know, eat a few things and jump off again onto the trees and fly away and maybe come back. I started enjoying those chirping sounds of the birds. I developed a new hobby, photography. And you'll be surprised what I was, what I was taking photographs on because I was all in the compound with the family members who lived with us, who at that time were very few. I think it was just my wife and I. <laughs> and so every moment I walked out of the house, I would look at these flowers, I would snap, thanks to the photo iPhones and other types of phones, take a snap, you know, look at this flower, take that one, look at that bird landing there, and these formed stories, you know. Have you seen that, how beautiful that bird is? You know, what is it eating? What is it cutting in its mouth, you know? And I can tell you that I could count the trees and the flowers. Uh, it's just a grass that I couldn't count. But this hobby of photography has stuck with me to this day. Today, I take pictures of anything. I take pictures of people, I take pictures of animals, I take pictures of grass, I take pictures of mountains. Uh, last week I was in Mombasa, I couldn't uh, stop taking pictures of sunrise and sunsets. Uh, you know, on the flight, taking pictures of Mount Kilimanjaro, looking for anything that I could take a picture of, right? Don't ask me what I do with those photos. Uh, some I share, uh, but that was just something that 
I found could set my mind at peace as we waited for Mutahi Kagwe to open space for us to go out again and start doing things that, uh, uh, that we should have been doing. In this process of taking pictures, um, COVID decided to visit uh, my son's home. So COVID struck. First, my son's wife got COVID. Secondly, my son got COVID. So my wife is in the room here, so I should be saying our son. And, and uh, so, so if I say my, uh, please take it to mean ours. Okay. <laughs> and this young couple had just gotten a baby who must have been like one month or two months uh, at the most uh, old. And this was the time of Mutai Kagwe's, uh, what did he call it? Um, where you couldn't leave your house, right? Quarantine or, or something like that. So here we are hearing about this COVID situation in our, our children's house, uh, a young baby, my wife saying, maybe we should go and take this baby and bring and stay with us. And then we start thinking, okay, so how will this baby get its milk uh, if it comes to stay with us? Um, and so it was an agonizing time. There's a lot of panic. Uh, we couldn't visit them. Mutai uh, wouldn't allow us. We, the best we could do is to pray for them, uh, to wish them well, to uh, encourage them, uh, to try and see if they could get some medical help somehow, because doctors were able to move. And uh, to pray and hope that this would end somehow. With the rest of the family, we were used to having family uh, lunches on Sunday and uh, get-togethers, etc., and all that was killed. So, thanks to technology, we adopted Zoom meetings with my family. So every Sunday at 7 p.m., we'd all be on a Zoom call for about an hour or so, checking, or two hours, checking um, what was going on. Um, of course, as many of you will know, uh, ladies normally have more words to spend in a day than men. And therefore, I think the ladies in the, ha in the family took advantage of that process. Because during the week, there was nowhere to spend this, this, this word. So kind of catching up with these words uh, on, 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 on Sunday evening. We were very happy that uh, uh, they got out of it. Um, in due course, after months and months and months, uh, the, the whole space was reopened. But one thing had also happened during that time. The village. Remember where this story started? I had not been to the village for 12 months, which was very unlike the previous routine of being in the village every month. And you can try to imagine what that meant. Uh, for us. We didn't know what was going on in the village. We were missing it. But we then saw that the bad and the ugly had somehow passed and we had used that space to get some benefits as well. My photography, I don't know how many of you take things for granted, things that you see with people that you meet and you just pass. It's just, it's obvious, it's kawaida, yeah? But adopting this habit, this newly acquired habit of taking pictures of everything in sight, noticing things that I don't notice, that I didn't notice, even noticing things that should actually be improved or changed or done away with. It's a space that opened up uh, for me during that time. So what is my village story then? I am en route to the village. <laughs> I want to go and 
experience the singing of the village birds. I want to go and breathe the fresh air of the village. I want to go and see the village monkeys, you know, climbing up and down the trees and the rooftops. But most of all, I want to go and see whether the village still brews or sake. <laughs> or if the village has also moved on from those good days. Thank you very much. <laughs>